could the entire panel uh, describe a specific project, not a concept, that is an example of innovation uh, across the entire UAE, not apps that don't exist, big data where there isn't even a cancer register. Uh, so basically this, this person says, nice words, but what's actually happening? Perhaps, Dr. Osama, you haven't spoken for a while, so I'm yeah, going yeah, to come yeah. to you first. So what, let, let, you've, you've mentioned a couple of things already, but um, what, what's live right now that didn't exist a year ago that's you know, harnessing big data or...? Okay, so I think uh, with regard to the, the Dubai Saf uh, Safest Heart City is a project which is ongoing now, it's already launched. So we started preparation for it maybe three or four months ago and it's going very well and almost we put the regulations for it. Uh, so I think I th consider it as an ongoing project. Uh, this is speaking of, of Dubai as well. Uh, I don't know if in Abu Dhabi, I think they have also... Sure, sure. The, what I mentioned earlier are payment for performance. So that's been in operation now for more than a year and a half, I think. Um, the first year where we took it into account when uh, negotiating uh, prices with providers was in 2017. Um, so we have a very robust measurement of provider performance, um, which is shared back on a quarterly basis with providers, and they've been receiving those reports for more than a year now. I mean, as I said, trends are uh, improving across the board in terms of efficiency and also in terms of quality. Um, we've had great um, cooperation with a lot of the, the provider groups in Abu Dhabi, um, and they've built in-house utilization committees to try and understand and quality departments. So that's really something that's ongoing, and the whole core of it is, um, is big data, right? Yeah. Understanding, and as I said before, it's easy to measure something, but to measure it fairly, that's where you really, under you need some data scientists to develop a proper risk adjustment methodology. So I'm interested in this, mm. um, uh, the data science scientist mm. bit. I hear this, I mean, it's, it's this big data is affecting every aspect of life and work around the world, and there's this need for data scientists, people who can analyze the data and order it. How is the UAE positioned, mm. and particularly, I guess, for our insurance company, which mm. is you know, a lot about analysis, mm. are there enough data sciences around? Do we have those skills in the, in the market? There's probably not enough around, for sure. It's a difficult skill set to hire for. Um, they tend to be expensive as well, so you need, you, know, you need to have the resources to really be able to afford it. I think there are some universities in the UAE that produce some good data scientists. Mazdar is one institution that I can think of um, where we've recruited from. Um, so there, there's a pool of people, but there's a lot of competition for them. So yeah. really, um, it's about not just hiring data scientists, but training the people that you have in this skill set. So they may be an actuary or they may be a statistician, but you can bring some expertise in-house, which is what we did with our risk adjustment methodology. It was developed for us uh, alongside a consulting firm. They trained our team how to use it and, and the, the methodology behind it, and it's now run ourselves. So we're not dependent on external support. Um, and that's kind of a constant, as trends change, as new, uh, new methodologies appear, that's a constant um, kind of innovation you need to keep doing within the intelligence department or strategy department. And Dr. Osama, for the DHA, what, what are the sort of skills you're looking for for the next generation of um, regulators and health authority people? Is it data yeah, I think analysts and data analysts is what the, the most wanted job for us now because it's really uh, centric to develop our futuristic strategies. Uh, we need to have like baseline, even if you want to put uh, forward a new policy, mm. you need to have a baseline of data, to see where you are exactly, and to build a business, uh, what we call a, a predictive model, to see what to evaluate every alternative, and then select the best one. So it's not easy to yeah. and, and for NMC, where, where are the um, resource requirements around innovation and taking healthcare forward, is it data? Yeah, it's definitely data, you know, there's no nothing else other than data. We currently are working on creating an accelerator to help, you know, the best university students across the world to come and work, and how can private sector develop on it. We're also currently working with the New York University in uh, in Abu Dhabi to uh, work on, uh, you know, getting the uh, the best ideas that could come up, which can be incubated in NMC's so platform. Th this is int I, I was at a conference recently when um, James Whitaker, who's the chief engineer for Microsoft, was speaking, and he was, there was this topic about STEM education, or science, technology, maths, uh, and engineering, and big data, data analysts, and everyone, the, the received wisdom is that's where we should focus our yeah. skills. 
he disagreed actually, this is an engineer at Microsoft, he said that artificial intelligence and bots will do data analysis faster and better than any human can and actually it's the creative set that the human brings that, that, that and so you, you've just mentioned about looking yeah. for new ideas, new ideas. so, so it's that creative element as definitely, important definitely because the thing is that uh, the for any innovation to become feasible uh, you know it definitely it has to have a financial advantage of it how can you reduce the cost so reduction of cost is entirely reducing the health care spend of the insurance company it makes uh, for regulators to understand you know and you know identify how can we improve so those ideas today are coming up from the world so we are looking east looking west both policies are going on from our side we are developing an accelerator from india which is again a uh, country where it comes a lot of ideas comes in the in the big picture of the what, world. What does an accelerator involve? Is that some, you've got a fund set aside yeah, to, exactly. to provide way, financing for uh, a you know, concept? It's a combination of that. It could be a financing set. It could be we use our platforms for them to come and develop their ideas. They can use our back office support. We can use all our support to them. So if a research student has a concept, exactly. uh, they can approach NMC exactly. for And they can use the information from our side. And if that is going to work out, we could participate on their financial plan or you know maybe they can themselves grow in the world so one on the east we are doing it in india and uh, the new york university with their campus in abu dhabi we are also working along with them